Kaylee, where at in the world are we right now? New Orleans. <laughs> at CSM. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Dylan Callier. I'm a physical therapist and welcome to the new Medical Nomads podcast, where I get to document my journey as a medical traveler, as well as interview other experts within the traveling field. Now, the rules for the traveling game are constantly changing, so anything you hear on this show should be for entertainment purposes only. This is not legal, financial, or medical advice. Enjoy the show and safe travels. Welcome to another episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast. I am your host, Dr. Dylan Callier. I am here with Kaylee Cole of New Grad Travel Therapy. Uh, today we're going to be talking about being new grads, going to conferences, uh, all the fun stuff that kind of comes with the freedom of being travelers. But Kaylee, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your story is? Yeah, so my name is Kaylee Cole, and I have wanted to be a PT since I was 16 years old. I was a gymnast growing up and I was always injured, so I had my own very personal PT who was always in our gym and rehabbing us if we couldn't do an event like bars or beam or vault. She was working with us and she became a really kind of close mentor of mine and role model at a very young age. So in high school I started interning with her and I knew for sure that I'm going to be a PT and lucky for me that never changed but what did change was I was convinced that I wanted to be a sports medicine PT that's what I was going to do and I got into PT school and sports medicine is still cool but oh my gosh oncology (laughs) acute care I like that what was not expecting to like acute care at all peds I liked peds I liked geriatrics so I became to get in a situation where I was like all right, I thought I knew what I was going to do, and I still want to do PT, but with PT, I have no idea where I want to go. So I started looking for jobs, obviously, like we all do once we graduate, and I had four different offers, but what I was really looking for was the opportunity to rotate between inpatient and outpatient settings. So wasn't finding that, obviously, and it got to the point where my dad said, Kaylee, just take something. Please take something. And so I'd been contemplating travel. I really didn't talk to anybody about Mm. it except for travel nurses that I knew through my mom and I just decided you know what I'm going to make my own position in travel so I called my dad up and I was like hey dad I I accepted a job I start on Monday and he's like great it's in Cleveland (laughs) he's like what what and I began this travel journey it was an eight-week contract I decided you know I'd keep applying for those perm jobs see if I could find one that was an inpatient outpatient um you know, cute rehab mix or whatever, and it just never came up, and I said I would do it for a year to figure out really where I wanted to go, and what I've learned is that I still have no idea, so I keep traveling, and no clinic is the same, no hospital is the same, and I've been really, really fortunate to work with so many different PTs, and just in my first year alone of traveling, I worked with 26 different PTs, which is incredible, and I do not think that I would have gotten that in a perm position Uh anyway, so... Um, I travel mainly for the professional development and the professional growth to not limit myself. You know, we Mm -hmm. go to school for seven years to be a physical therapist. And I don't think it's fair unless you know that this is what you want to specialize in, that you're going to come out and say, I'm going to do outpatient forever. I'm going to do acute forever. And I didn't want to close any doors. So Mm -hmm. that's why I'm traveling and promoting it to other new grads who (laughs) want to have the same great experience that we are. Yes, no, that's great. Um, I usually bring it back to, you know, there are three different types of whys into travel. Mm-hmm. Um, you got the location, obviously, which is what usually yep. most people go into it for. It's what I do it for. Um, you have the financial incentives and then you yep. the professional growth. So yep. for those that are kind of stuck, they don't know where they're wanting to go. Um, they're wanting to you know, continue to grow in skill set along with those other incentives that come with it. I think it's a great opportunity. And, yep. You know, it comes back to your why. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I... You know, even outpatient, though, I went to school in New York City, Mm. and they don't have pools in New York City, so I had one contract where I did aquatics, and I really had to be a self-starter and go on and do continuing education. I had to get to the clinic early and get in the pool and play with the equipment to really feel what it was going to feel like with the patients, but, you know, by going to different clinics and different parts of the country, even, they they treat differently, and they have Mm. different resources available to them, different patient populations, so... It's really, really advantageous from that. And 
I didn't even look at the money, honestly, before I started traveling, but now that I know what it is, it would be hard to take a permanent position. <laughs> That's great. And so we had met originally at the Travelers Conference yes. last year. So TravCon, we bumped into each other, got yes. to know each other a little bit. So thanks for you know being on the show and talking. Yeah, thanks for travel. having me. Um, let's go into, so you're traveling to grow your your professional skills. Mm -hmm. um, how do you choose positions that you're going to go into? Is it you hear something about neuro, you want to start doing kind of a neuro rotation, outpatient orthopedic, or is it kind of you search for a variety and you pick which ones sound the best? So honestly, I was I believe in being completely honest, and my classmates joke that if you know there was an accolade for me, it would be brutally honest when I graduated <laughs> from PT school. And I was 100% honest with the recruiters that I started working with as to what my why was. And I was very clear with that. And, you know, I didn't want to go into skilled nursing. I didn't have experience with that. And mm. I feel like um, I'm open to trying it now, but I wanted to start in a setting that I was comfortable mm -hmm. with, number one. So that was yeah. the first priority was getting my feet wet in a safe way in a place that was clinically appropriate. And I was very lucky that she was able to be patient with me to find that instead of just wanting to throw me in a sniff right away, mm -hmm. like um, you hear about sometimes. And then from there, she knew that I had interest in pediatrics and just expanding my skill set. So I really trusted, I got lucky to be able to trust her that when she's seeing the jobs come across her desk, she was mm -hmm. reading what the actual description was and being like, you know, this is a really unique opportunity. Um, even like the first major acute care assignment that I did, my clinical was at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City, which is a fantastic clinical opportunity, right. but they're very, very specialized. So I'd never seen acute spinal cord injury. I'd never seen an open heart surgery. And an opportunity came across her desk where they were willing to bring on a new grad and have me come three weeks early to precept in their three different ICUs with the therapist going out on maternity leave. And those are the kind of things that I said, this is, you know, when those come across, that's what I want you to present me. So that's kind of how I prioritize. And mm -hmm. it, would, it would be hard to do because we don't see the job orders, right? If you go onto a website and you're looking at the job, you're going to see SNF or whatever the setting be, home health, outpatient, the city, like how long the contract is and maybe what their ideal start date would be. Maybe there might be a bullet that says mm -hmm. license required or one year experience preferred. But other than that, you don't have any details about the job. So you really need to have your recruiter that is trying to give you as many details as possible before mm -hmm. so that you can make those decisions. Unless you're just like, I don't care because I want Denver and I'll do any setting, any start date and any pay. Mm -hmm. And that's your why then. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so absolutely. It, it goes back to <laughs> what is your why? Yep. Why are and communicating you communicating that? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, Kaylee, how, how long have you been traveling now? I've been traveling since I graduated in 2015. Okay. So, I've never held a permanent job. Um, Will you ever? I don't know. <laughs> now, I don't <laughs> give a good question I, for all travelers. <laughs> I don't give a time frame because I did that. I said I would travel for a year, uh -huh. and now it's been almost three. So, when people ask, how long are you going to travel for? Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm taking an assignment, mm -hmm. you know, assignment by assignment, and uh -huh. I have an absolute love for one of the contracts that I did, and uh -huh. I could see myself going back. I've loved pretty much all of them, but, <laughs> um, one more than the rest, I would say, okay. but it was in outpatient pediatrics, and okay. I feel as soon as I make that jump to really specialize uh -huh. in outpatient pediatrics, I limit my ability to jump back if, yeah. that, if I change yeah. my mind. So I need some more time to make sure that that's kind of where I want to go, but yeah. Absolutely. Um, what are some things, so you've done, you're going for professional growth. Right. When you're looking at these contracts, if you are in Ohio, yes. but then the next one's in California, does that affect your decision on where you're wanting to go? Does the distance kind of deter you from certain positions? It does. So I carry nine states, knowing that I'm very setting specific and professional mm -hmm. growth specific. Um, but for my own comfort, zone i would like to visit california but i don't know that i'm ready to go all the way out to california so i carry a lot of my licenses in the northeast Got even it. though i'm from ohio um i do have license in colorado haven't been able to work there yet so hopefully a contract will come up that will mm -hmm. be a good fit for me i've interviewed for a couple there that just 
we're not good fits and mm. that's another thing that we have to know when we're interviewing that even if it's the most ideal location which they were hard jobs to pass mm. up there both at, right in Colorado Springs um, you have to know yourself and what's going to be a good fit for you so and I have Florida as well so I'm kind of like scattered but okay. <laughs> yeah, I also like to keep licenses where I've got friends and family because, as we all know, traveling can get a little bit lonely mm -hmm. sometimes. So it's nice if you do have friends and family scattered around, you can kind of use it to your advantage to be able to spend more time with them than you might mm -hmm. have been able to before and use those kind of contracts to break up the other ones where yep. you're really being a solo adventurist, yep. if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Is there anything you know now that you wish you would have known a few years back when you first started? Now, the biggest advice I would give to any new traveler is to follow your gut in terms of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we do pretty much everything over the phone, except when you get the opportunity to meet in person like mm -hmm. we have, you know, or like we meet each other on Facebook. You're talking with your crews through phone, email, mm -hmm. text. You're doing the interview over the phone. And so you really need to gut check yourself. And if something about the relationship with the recruiter you're talking to doesn't feel right, then you move on. If you've done an interview and it doesn't feel right, you move on. You know, you don't just say, well, it's only 13 weeks and I just really want this location. I've mm -hmm. been there, done that. And those... Out of you know ten travel contracts, I've had two that haven't been as ideal as I would have liked, and there were the yeah. times that I did not follow my gut, Got and it. I took the job because I wanted that location. Uh -huh. Okay. So follow Got your it. gut. <laughs> there. So I used to be, or I still am. I'm very analytical. I'm very um, science based, and it was hard for me to ever follow my intuition mm -hmm. because it always felt like emotions or you know something that didn't really have any validity right. to it. But I read a book recently called Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Okay. And he talks about the science of there's actually something to intuition. And it's these yeah. little thin slices that you pick up in somebody. Maybe they hesitate a little bit. Maybe their eyes dart off when they're talking to you. Right. Maybe it's the tone of their voice on the phone. And it's not that you can pick it out and look at it and say, that's fake. That's, that's fake, right. Um, one of the examples he gives is there was this big statue and everybody thought it was like this ancient historical statue and all the all the experts would look at it and say no that's fake and i can't tell you why it's fake but it is fake, it's fake yeah. uh and so use that intuition go with your gut know that just because you can't tell why it feels off just know yeah. it feels off and i would say usually if you go with your intuition it's right absolutely and i feel like from a lot of the new grads that i'm talking to um right now and it's especially in the ot market because it's a little bit tougher right now, and that's not to discourage anyone that's an OT new graduate that wants to travel, but it is a little bit tougher, and I've been mentoring a couple that haven't necessarily had the greatest experience because they've just wanted a job so bad mm -hmm. that they take it even though they don't necessarily feel like they're clinically ready for what the job description is being or their gut's not telling you the right thing. There's always going to be another opportunity it might mean that you need to be a little bit more flexible at first in terms of your location, what you're willing to accept for pay, um, that type of thing. But don't just take the first thing that comes up because you want a job when it doesn't feel right. There will be other opportunities. I'm sure that you've noticed that at this point too. You know, you turn down an interview and in the next hour, there's something else that's popped up. Yep. So, yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there are opportunities, um, even for, you know, new grad PTs, OTs, nurses coming out um, who have done their two years outside yeah. of school in order to get into it. Um, why, so let's go into your why behind starting the new grad group and what is what it, what really drove that and then uh, kind of what you're doing. Okay, so what really drove it is um, when I started traveling, I didn't have a lot of support from, um, you know, tenured therapists and people that are really respected because they'd heard bad things about traveling, you know, and um, you're not going to get any mentorship. You're going to be thrown into places that no one wants to work. And for me, I was like, okay, um, do I go against all these people that I really respect that are telling me to go and get that permanent job and do the mentorship or do I follow my heart and do it? And, you know, I, I stuck to myself with what I wanted. And I said, I'm not going to start in a brand new setting that I'm not familiar with and I did turn down the first couple of jobs where they wanted me to jump between a couple of different outpatient mm -hmm. clinics supervising multiple PTAs at each yep. and I said you know I don't feel comfortable with that so I kept interviewing until I found the right one and 
as time went by and I maintained these relationships with my professors, their um, viewpoints actually kind of changed. And now they actually are sending students from the program to talk to me. And they're like, you know what? Travel has been great for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking to change is the negativity that is associated with traveling as a new grad. I'm never going to say that it's right for everyone, just as a seasoned therapist might not mm -hmm. be able to travel. It really comes down to your personality. How are you doing on your clinical? So I'm trying to bridge that gap from student clinician to traveling therapist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you've spoken to me on the phone before, a lot of times I tell them you maybe you shouldn't travel if you have these concerns or you weren't treating a high enough caseload on your own or you didn't get it until that last week. And it's really become kind of a passion project of mine because the better the travelers that we are too, the better the industry looks as a whole. And so my goal has been to create more resources for new grads so that not only we look better as a community, but professors don't see it negatively anymore. Uh, clients aren't less, you know, hesitant to hire a new grad because there, there are clients that won't hire a new grad, but um, just trying to change like the overall way that traveling as a new grad has looked in this industry, but also to, to hold staffing agencies and mm -hmm. other people accountable to provide these resources and things. Yep. If you're really casting a net to catch these new grads, mm -hmm. what are you doing to make sure that you're providing the support that they do need? Absolutely. And, you know, it takes more time to find a placement for someone like me and a, a level of patience. So that's what I'm trying to preach and promote. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. And I can hundred percent relate with that. So when I was coming out of school, it was not that, my professors and those around me weren't supportive, but it was right. questions of concern. And then it was exactly. always these horror stories. So, oh, did you hear uh, this person who knew this person who knew this person went to a contract and they were in a bad situation and then they ended up having to leave? Right. I don't know. It's, it's interesting because they bring those up and it's almost like they don't expect you to be able to handle it. Right. Which is almost a reflection on, you know, how, how the program is doing, which I don't think, you know, I'm not saying the professors who don't, support travel have uh, bad programs by any means but you know they need to have confidence with their students and right. now there's resources out there that you can go and ask questions and learn more about the yep. contracts you can um, contact your professors and ask them hey there's this like billing question I have is this okay yep. and they can answer it and so you even as a student even mm -hmm. as a new graduate you're gonna have these connections that you can use and Facebook yep. groups are popping up all over the yep, place you can exactly. go to Kaylee's, you can go to mine, yeah. and you just throw out a question, and then everybody's really responsive to it, and you usually get some good answers. Yeah, we try to keep it a safe place, positive, yeah. and that was the same thing with my professors, too. It wasn't that they were really, like, not supportive about it, but they did. They had those, those concerns, and the feeling of, you, well, you're just going to be sent to wherever no one wants to work, and <laughs> that's, that's not the case, so... Um, yeah. Well, your, your position was for an eight-week maternity leave. Yes. Okay. Yep. I've done a lot of maternity yeah. leaves. Right now I'm on an FMLA, so uh, I'm covering for a therapist that had scaphalunate ligament reconstruction, uh, okay. so obviously has no use of his right wrist and hand, uh -huh. so can't practice. So I'm covering for that, and then I'll skip out. But mm -hmm. I've done military leaves. I've wow. done seasonal. But mm -hmm. I've done a lot of maternity leaves, really, Good. too. So, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to see happen among the staffing agencies is you know we, there's a lot of therapists that are really willing to give back and I'm sure in the nursing too we're people that like to help people right uh -huh. and as travelers we don't have the opportunity to be clinical instructors mm -hmm. which is kind of part of our professional duty right mm -hmm. if we were in perm positions it would be expected that you would take a student here or there so what I'm looking to see happen in the industry overall is that these staffing agencies that are really marketing to new grads are taking the time and the resources to match that new grad with a therapist that's vetted. So if you're a PT, you're matched with a PT that has experience in the same practice setting as your assignment mm -hmm. so that you've got someone that's been vetted by the agency through stellar performance reviews and you know that you can go to this good therapist and they're going to give you a non-biased answer. Because even mm -hmm. if you have a therapist at the facility that you're going to, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're giving you the best advice. Their advice might be affecting their bonus mm -hmm. by telling Absolutely. you to bill in a certain way or to change your numbers to meet mm -hmm. productivity. So I really think it's important to have someone that is completely non-biased but is 
you know, trustworthy person. So that's what I'm working on. I've been working on with the agencies, still working full time, still mm-hmm. times limited, but I've gotten to a lot of agencies and some are receptive and some aren't. So we'll keep working on it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, and that's something I've noticed. So I've been having my years in the industry for a while. This has been a dream job for a long time. Yeah. And it, it seems like the mentorship programs for traveling is starting to pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think it's a great idea that you can get somebody out there with some knowledge for those kind of, you know, just questions and connections that you don't mm-hmm. necessarily have. Um, especially who have been in the travelers and been in those tough situations where you have one person telling you one thing, the other person telling you another thing. Right. Yeah, it's interesting because about a year ago when I started this whole like official project, I guess you could say, I ran a survey and I need to do it again. But what I did was I actually split it up between travelers and permanent therapists. And I said, what, how long was your orientation in each job? And I compared it. And obviously, permanent therapists had a longer orientation, mm-hmm. but it might not be as long as what professors and even you are thinking that you might get coming mm-hmm. out unless you're working in a specialized hospital or are in a residency. Mm-hmm. Most were still only two to three weeks, yeah. was the 50%. And, you know, as a traveler, I've gotten up to a week. I've gotten up to three weeks. So it really just depends on the assignment. So that was the first part. The second part was, were you given a mentor? And if yes, was it an on-site mentor or an off-site mentor? And only 57% or something around there were actually given mentors. So I'm hoping that in the travel industry, if we actually start to do this off-site mentorship program, that number will be better than in perm. Because just because you take a perm job too does not mean that you are guaranteed mentorship. So you still have to do a really good job when you're interviewing for any job, permanent or travel, to figure out what's the orientation going to be, what's the mentorship going to be, and what does that mentorship consist of. Right, absolutely. And that's something I saw coming out of school as well, that talking about skills and growth, you get to see a lot of different contracts. Yes, absolutely. You know, if you work your typical 13-week contracts, you're seeing for a week, or sorry, for a year, Mm -hmm. um, you get to know your worth, your value, um, what are some things to look at, what things you should argue for, where like the red flags to keep up with. Um, So it's not just the the clinical side of things that you get to learn, but it's also those um, things that will really set your career off in a good good way. Yeah, you just keep adding to your skill set. So at this point, I've done a lot of outpatient contracts because Mm -hmm. I really do like outpatient, but you know, hospital-based outpatient is going to be different than private practice. Mm-hmm. Occupational medicine is going to be different than aquatics and sports medicine and your neuro-based and your clinics that do more post-surgical. There's clinics that mm-hmm. do a lot of chronic pain. So it helps you figure out, okay, do I really do want to do a full caseload of mm-hmm. this for when you're traveling? The other thing that I've noticed is working with all the different directors of rehab. Mm-hmm. A, you're going to collect a reference from each one if you do a great job. So you're building your professional network really uh-huh. well but you're working with different management styles. And I feel like for me as a student, I had no idea when I wanted it a manager Mm -hmm. when I'm coming out. You know, your clinical instructor isn't telling you everything that they love and hate about their job. It Mm -hmm. wouldn't be appropriate. So this gives you a way to go out for 13 weeks, try something Uh, like, you know what? I really like how they manage this, but this I don't really love. And uh, then you start building things up as to what your ideal perm job would mm -hmm. be when you're ready to take that. So that's an added benefit from a professional standpoint yeah for sure and i think most of the fear coming out well most of the fear coming out is you're worried about being taken advantage of right and that doesn't just happen in travel that happens all over the place it does um you know leaving money on the table not knowing that you could ask for more getting low wages um working into a place and then all of a sudden you're seeing up to 30 patients a day yeah like those bad you know the scenarios mm-hmm. that you hear about um that you're trying to stay away from but just because you're not a traveler doesn't mean you're safe from that Right. And, you know, it, it just comes back to how you've been taught and knowing yourself, knowing how to handle those situations and educating yourself. Because yeah. ultimately that responsibility is to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you know it or not, you're going to be leaving stuff on the table. Um, so mm-hmm. educate yourself. Stay positive. You got this. Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah. learn from it. And, you know, do your research before if something again if something doesn't feel right and i talk about this a lot with billing if they're t- asking you to bill in a certain way that sounds unfamiliar to you and you're not sure 
you know, use those around you um, that are trusted individuals and have that experience. You rely on your mentor if mm-hmm. your recruiting agency has given you one, but really go and do your own due diligence and go to the CMS site, print out what you're looking for, highlight it and say, you know, um, based on my understandings, this is how it's supposed to be done. So could you, would you be able to show me where you're reading what mm-hmm. you're asking me to do? Absolutely. And that's something that I've used in those situations. Yeah. And it's usually come out where they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you can keep billing this uh-huh. way. So. I see, I see. And do you have um, any horror stories or um, any negative experiences that you've had in the past? And then how did you and your recruiter handle those? Right. So I did have one negative experience and I don't like to dwell on it. And I, it's not something I write about, but since we're talking about it live, I feel like it comes <laughs> through a little bit easier because I, it's not meant to scare people from traveling, but my third or fourth contract, I went up to work in assisted living facilities. They were going to be outpatient clinics that were in assisted living facilities in a location that I really want. I won't give the name of the company or even where it was, (laughs) but you know, I didn't have the greatest gut feeling on the interview and I said, well, but the location and it's only eight weeks. Like I'm going to just, I'm going to do it and I'm going to have such a great time on all the weekends. I'm going to do this, this, and this. So (laughs) I went up and the very first day there, I have 10 patients in three hours. They're all Medicare and they're telling me to bill three units for each one. No group code built into the system. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my license. This is (laughs) not, not okay. So of course I call my recruiter crying and I'm terribly upset and I don't know what to do. And I, you know, we'd had a relationship because I had been on contract with her, but mm-hmm. that water wasn't really tested yet. And she was so responsive up until like, I don't know, nine o'clock at night with me telling me that I've got you mm-hmm. and we're going to fix this first thing in the morning. Don't sign any of your notes and pull from the contract, put on a do not use list. And, you know, it was, a, did I lose money on it? Yeah. Because I had housing, I had Airbnb. Mm-hmm. So I lost like mm-hmm. two weeks of the Airbnb, but it's okay because yeah. at the end of the day, I knew that, all right, things happen and I need to trust my mm-hmm. gut from now on. But I was also looking back on it now. I'm proud of myself for standing up mm-hmm. for myself and saying, you know, this is not right. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sign these yeah. notes. And, you know, it, it was a positive experience mm-hmm. in the end because I did have that support that I needed. And that's what, you know, we, we can hope for with yeah. everyone is Absolutely. that they have that positive experience. and. Absolutely people to go to yeah yeah well thank you so much for being on the show yeah thank you is there anything else that you would want to tell uh maybe somebody who's just coming into therapy on the fence not sure if it's for them um whether they're still a student whether a new graduate they're a nurse they've been practicing for two years and they're about to make that leap what would you tell that person i would tell that person to talk to people that are currently traveling you know and if you're a nurse that's been practicing for a couple of years, maybe find another nurse that started with that two years of experience so that they're more relatable to you. If you're a new grad or a current student, talk to someone that started as a new grad or a current student so that they can relate to you and really go over what your, your fears are. In this industry, we're promoting transparency, and so it doesn't do anyone any favors to hide what those fears are, and if you have a certain concern, too, and you're talking to a recruiter about maybe you don't feel confident clinically in this area or that area, it doesn't make you look bad to have weaknesses. The fact that you can acknowledge your weaknesses and discuss them is going to be better for you, so that's what I would recommend, and, you know, it's not for everyone, so you do need to do that research, but it's there's resources out there. There's so many resources. He's got his podcast. There's a ton of different Facebook groups, mm-hmm. blogs. Um, like I said earlier, we're therapists. We'd love to help each other. So mm-hmm. I'm willing to talk on the phone to anyone that's interested. And, you know, what did your clinical look like? And what does it look like as a traveler? And do those align. And maybe if they don't, then you're not quite mm-hmm. ready. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, because it's still going to be there. This industry is not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So. And for... The current position I'm actually at, so being fresh, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can actually be a strength. Um, One of the highlights and the reasons that I connected so well on that interview was because I was fresh out of school, because she loves to teach, because she loves um, new graduates. And she's had um, experiences before where she had experienced therapists who were already set in their ways and they didn't want to 
um, change. They didn't want to, you know, do the yeah. new systems, things like that. And if you're coming out of school, usually you're pretty open to right. it. Again, it comes back to personality. But um, just because you're a new graduate doesn't mean it's a negative. It no, can absolutely. absolutely be a strength. Absolutely. And for any students that are listening, my advice to you would be to challenge yourself during your clinicals because you have your clinical rotations are almost like when you've got the training wheels on the bike, right? <laughs> but try to treat that full caseload as soon as you can because your mm. clinical instructor is still there to catch you if you fall. Mm. And that's going to help you whether you take a permanent position or you decide to travel. So really, really challenge yourself in clinical. Stay open-minded. You might turn out like me and think that you were set on one setting and then you were open-minded and love something else. So those would be my advice to any students that are maybe thinking about traveling. All right. Well, Kaylee, if the listeners have any questions or would like to contact you, what's the best way they can do so? They can contact me through my website, www.newgradtraveltherapy.com. There's a contact form on there, or you can also email me at newgradpt, or sorry, newgradtravelpt at gmail.com. Fantastic, fantastic. And for the listeners, for... If you're looking for the next episodes coming up, I do the official launches on the Facebook page, New Medical Nomads Podcast. If you're looking to contact Kaylee, she's part of the New Medical Nomads group on Facebook as well. Uh, I'm also on YouTube. If you're listening to this on iTunes, any likes, comments, shares greatly help us reach the people that we're trying to reach. So we greatly appreciate that. And if you're looking for the early access to the episodes, you can also find those on YouTube and iTunes as well. But again, Kaylee, thanks so much thanks, Dylan. for being on, uh, meeting up at CSM, yeah. time away from the lectures and such. Yeah. But we're going to get back to it. So everybody out there, have safe travels. Bye, guys.